Yes, you read that thumbnail right. 38 kilowatt hour battery pack for the CyberCab, the RoboTaxi, the whole new shebang. And uh, why does it matter? Who cares? Is that too small? Is it too big? What does it mean for the cost, the weight? You're not going to believe it. There's a whole lot to get into. So let's just get into it. I'm Brian. Welcome to Futuraza. No music again, because editor's on vacation and I don't feel like it. We got too much to cover. Top Gear shared a couple of Tesla CyberCab tidbits that they learned from talking with the Tesla engineers at the event, aiming for 5.5 kilowatt hours uh, for the efficiency, uh, from uh, which would make it the most efficient EV on the road. I think they're sandbagging. If you drive a Model 3 conservatively, you're already at uh, 5 miles to the kilowatt. I think 5.5 is not aspirational. I think it's sandbagged. We'll get on to that. Range of 200 miles is the target with a small battery. You didn't think to calculate it? Well, I did it for you because, guys, what are we doing here? Uh, that would be, uh, oh, that's the weight. Anyway, 38 kilowatts is what it comes out to be. 38 kilowatts. So the weight is, uh, if we look at a 75 kilowatt hour pack for the Model 3, it weighs 479 kilos, which is 1,000 pounds. Cut it in half. Cut it in half. It's half the size. It's half the weight. You just drop 500 pounds from the weight of your vehicle. But you also drop the weight of the back seats, the back doors. You dropped a lot of weight for a lot of things that you no longer need. There's money here. It's going to be lighter. That gets us into a virtuous cycle. So what are we looking at here? Tesla purchased idle CATL equipment to build battery production lines in the U.S. Well, these could be for any kind of batteries. Yeah, they could. But they're probably for LFPs. And how much? Well, 10 gigawatt hour per year is the capacity. Now, this isn't old garbage equipment. This is idle equipment because China overbuilt their capacity and built it very quickly. 10 gigawatt hours per year. I did the math on that as well. That would be 263,157 battery packs of 38 kilowatt hours. Perfect. And why LFP? Well, because, of course, you can charge it all the way up. You can charge it uh, to the max, and it doesn't degrade. When the cars are idle, just let them charge. Uh, it doesn't need to stop at 80 to, to baby the battery, or even 90, no, go to 100. Drag it all the way down to 2 3%. It doesn't matter. This is the best. They're very cheap batteries, too. So we're saving a bunch of money. The battery cost is now half of what it was, just because it's a half-size battery. And it's using LFP, which is a cheaper chemistry, and a better chemistry for a use case like this. And the improvements are still coming. Does that mean 263000 is the limit? No, of course not. They uh, More battery production will be coming online. And who knows, some of these could be diverted to the Model 3 and Y standard range uh, in the meantime you know, rear-wheel drive versions or something, so they would qualify for the IRA credit for as long as that lasts. Another fact we found out, oh my gosh, it's got staggered wheels. 18-inch in the front, 21s in the back. Maybe that isn't what staggered means, but you get the idea. Um, the final will not have 21-inch wheels. It will not have them. Uh, you do that on prototypes. Those are very expensive wheels and tires. The tires are uh, it's less comfortable of a ride around Warner Brothers lot. It's a very controlled environment. No potholes. Uh, but in the real world, potholes do exist. Bumps in the road, heaves in the pavement, all that exists. You want to have softer ride, but really what you want is cheaper wheels and tires. If you use a smaller wheel diameter, you'll get more range. If you use a uh, smaller wheel diameter with a fatter tire, you've got cheaper tires, cheaper wheels, and a smoother ride. It's just easy math for a fleet vehicle, and you're less likely to pop them. So that's also a benefit. What difference does size wheel make? Well, uh, this just explains they're more expensive. The larger, <laughs> the larger it is, the more expensive they are. Now, uh, another question was asked, is this going to be all-wheel drive? Uh, I don't think so. In most places, you don't need all-wheel drive. All-wheel drive is fantastic for performance or seriously inclement weather, but front-wheel drive does really, really well. So when you have a two-wheel... Uh, a person had asked me recently in the comments, why does Tesla, when they do a two-wheel drive version, always do rear-wheel? Shouldn't it be front so that you've got, you know, the good traction? That's only with gas-powered cars. Having the weight above the motor 
gives you more traction. The weight's very well balanced. It doesn't matter which wheels are doing the driving. So Tesla puts the drive motor in the back, leaves you a little more leg room, you know, frunk room, whatever it may be in the engineering. Uh, and you get that with a uh, cyber cab with no frunk, because who needs a frunk? Uh, you've got that opportunity to put the motor up there, just be done with it. So I believe it will be two wheel drive front only front wheel drive. Another one that I'd missed, this was in my notes for the video yesterday, but I didn't get it in because I didn't make a slide. There are no side mirrors and there's no center mirror. You don't need those things. You don't need to see what's behind you. You're not driving. Well, what does that save? 20 bucks? No, it saves a lot. It could be as much as 50 bucks per. It's probably more like 50 in total, but the real cost is the wiring, the installation, and the engineering. And you do get a little bit of drag, but these will mostly be city taxis, so it doesn't matter quite as much. But they will go on highways, and you do want that improved aero, so that'll save some money right there. But the big savings is not having this piece of equipment with controls that need to be wired, tested, and configured, and validated, and not having to install it, verify it, and warranty it. Savings, savings, savings. It's all there. Now, this thing is a, a butte, but uh, bear in mind that production vehicles don't always look like the prototypes. And with the wheels, that is especially the case. They love to put oversized wheels on prototypes because they look cooler. A lot of prototypes will have uh, windows that are so large they don't even roll down because it looks good. And then, of course, you have to either put a partition in it so only part of it rolls down or just change the entire shape of the car. So some examples. This is a prototype of the Volvo XC. Wow, that looks fantastic. And then this is what you got. That's not that's not exciting. Uh, look at this concept uh, for uh, this Renault versus what you got. That's cool. That's wild. That's radical. And that's just a car. And as much as Tesla tries to stay true to their original vision, they can't always do it. This is the difference between the prototype and what you got. Now it's very close, but now that you've had a chance to look at Cybertrucks as much as you probably have, you can see those are two quite different vehicles. Um, which one you like better, that's up to you to decide, but you get the idea. So looking at this, the other thing is a thousand people went something like that. A thousand people had the opportunity to ride in this car. Not all of them had the time to, but you could stand in line and do it. And a bunch of them, a whole bunch of them said, what's it made out of? Is it, is it steel? Is it stainless steel? Um, when you could just knock on it, why didn't you just knock on it? You would know if it was plastic or fiberglass or versus some kind of metal, you would know. Now, whatever it's made of today doesn't necessarily matter. Some people have said, oh, I heard that it's a uh, carbon fiber or a resin kind of deal. Uh, but I think it would probably be plastic. Carbon fiber takes a long time to cure. It's uh, There are ways to speed up the process, but it doesn't scale as well as just injection molding. Uh, and we do know, because Matthew Donegan Ryan was able to get a confirmation, cyber cab exterior panels are not stainless due to the weight and the cost. Correct. Those things uh, negate a lot of the value. Now you could still have it just as is and paint it just normal metal. That'd be very cheap, very easy. Uh, something they're very good at and know how to do, uh, but they could move on to something like plastic. And if the question is, how are you going to do that safely? The answer to that is uh, you can make safe plastic. Saturn used to have plastic door panels. Uh, they would do demos where they would let you smack it with a baseball bat. You're not really going to cause much harm. It's probably not a real heavy baseball bat, but you get the idea. Uh, there's not a lot of harm that can come to them. And a lot of your structure is not in the skin. You can just put a, a steel pipe in the door. Solved. Problem solved. Uh, and there was also a thought that, oh my gosh, because the doors don't have all the fiddly stuff, there's no wiring in the doors. And while Matthew, I think it was Matthew, looked for it and couldn't find any wires, those windows still roll up. Maybe they use uh, pins. So when the door closes, it has power. I don't know. That seems a little out there, but it doesn't have all the other controls, all the other nonsense. And if you're eliminating all that stuff, if you're eliminating the mirrors, the uh, 
uh, all the comforts like that that you would expect. The million buttons with wires. Even the uh, inability to adjust the seat is is a big cost savings. You don't have to pay for the rails. You don't have to pay for the motors or the levers or latches or any of that stuff. Have you ever gotten in a taxi and said, ooh, can I adjust this seat? I'd like to be a little higher or a little farther, farther forward or a little bit back. Nah, that's not a thing. You don't get on a city bus and go, boy, I sure wish I could adjust my seat. Now, you might complain that the seat's not comfortable enough. These appear to be comfortable. Problem solved. Replacing them would be a very quick, easy task. It would involve a couple of bolts, and that's it. You're done. So there are cost savings that just keep piling up and piling up. And if I've missed some more, uh, first go back and watch yesterday's video in case you didn't, but then come back and comment. Heck, comment either way. Just do it. Uh, like, subscribe, do the usual. Stay tuned and juicy. And I cannot wait to hear from you clever robots uh, because that's what we do.